So this video is for the silver stacker who's trying to decide if they should buy the high premium, low mintage silver products that are being produced by both sovereign and private mints these days. Is there any benefit to doing so? Hi everyone, Silver Joker here. Well, I talked to the owner of Franklin Street Coin because he buys and sells a lot of this type of silver to kind of give us an idea of the pros and cons of putting this type of bullion in your stack. All right, Phil, so here we go. I mean, we, we are continuing our little mini series here with the <laughs> different types of silver. We've talked about in a previous video about, um, you know, the best types of silver to buy if you're just starting out and all that kind of stuff. And we kind of did a broad video on that, but then we decided to break it down and go and do a video on each one. So we talked about the 90% silver. And we talked about the three nines fine or generic silver. And now we're going to talk about the premium silver. Now this is the kind of the uh, the cream of the crop when it comes to premium buying it. Mm -hmm. And I see you got some some different examples here. We got some other ones that you want to show us. So why would somebody choose to pay the extra for this over, let's say, the generic silver? Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're buying it because first of all and foremost, like I say, it's, there's a fun factor involved with buying this type of thing, and a lot of it's a new you know, a new entity in terms of what they have in their collection. Um, but the, the value is in the fact that you like it and down the road, somebody else is gonna like it. So they're going to um, go ahead and probably pay a premium price for when you go to sell it. Um, a lot of these things are low mintage type things. So it becomes kind of thrown into the collector realm of the mentality of collecting uh, it's not just silver anymore now it's a collector piece and that's where the next buyer in line comes into play there's say they only make so many of a certain item that you really like um, and they don't make any more the manufacturer decides to cut it off say at 5,000 or 10,000 pieces well chances are there's always going to be that 5,001 or 5,010 customers that want that so it's going to keep the price up and when you go to resell it, you just have to find somebody that likes it as much as you did when you originally bought it. I got you. So it becomes a fact that if you like it, there's a chance that there's other people out there that like it. And they think it's just a neat thing to own. And when they buy it from you, they're going to pay you a premium. And when they go to sell it, they expect to get a premium back for it. I got you. It really would depend. I mean, there, there's certain things that have longevity. I mean, uh, Batman here... Um, will have longevity. Uh, Batman, you know, the, the movies, the comic books, uh, everything associated with Batman right now has a high price associated with it. So this will probably have some longevity if you decide to buy this and, and stick it, you know, away for a while. Um, the peanuts, um, probably the same thing. Those have always been around. Uh, it's been around for a long time, same as Batman. Uh, there's, it's kept in front of the new generation so they know who this is, what it is. And down the road, probably will again have longevity. It, it's just as a matter of again finding the right buyer down the road. But there are some things that also have cross um, cross collectors. Comic book collectors would probably like something like this. And when they're paying, you know, high prices for Batman comic books, you know, dropping a hundred or two hundred dollars for a piece of one ounce silver is not a big deal to them because they like everything Batman. Okay. So you have some cross collecting also going on in, in the high end or what we call the premium silver market. Um, and manufacturers know that. So they're constantly coming out with different things that would attract not only people that are collecting silver because they make it in pure silver, you know, 999 or 49 silver, but they create something that they feel is going to be in demand because they're going to create it in low mintage for one thing and they're going to create cross cross collecting which means um, they're going to have two sets of collectors looking at it which increases their base of buyers but my my feeling is if you're going to bu buy into this realm of silver um, just enjoy what you're buying I mean that's the whole factor of I mean, you, you just enjoy what you're buying you enjoy having it you're not looking at it as a just an ounce of silver you're looking at it as more of a collector piece and you know this ounce of uh, batman or uh the the two ounce queen's beast um these Which are, are new, like you know, wildly popular yeah these those are right very popular like very and they popular. limited you know they limited the number of these also again to create a little bit of a stir in terms of the world market you know in demand if you create more of a demand than you have supply the prices are going to be high and they're going to stay high i mean if i was a 
refinery and I was looking to create a you know a following for my refinery um, I would put out limited amounts of things that I think are people would kind of flock to in terms of having a really cool factor associated with them or fun factor associated with them and just put them out in lower quantities where you know they're going to sell out and you know there's going to be a secondary market for the demand and that's going to push your next sale of the next item you come out with and, and so and so forth so I think a lot of manufacturers have kind of figured that out and they put a lot of this type of thing out it doesn't mean you have to buy all of them it, like I say focus on the things you really enjoy if you like cartoons if you like you know Marvel products if you like um, any type of there's Star Wars that have come out you know they kind of tap into these cross collecting you know uh, realms where you have people that are collecting not they're not necessarily they like that it's silver but they're not just collecting the silver value of it they, they kind of like what they're collecting and they have fun doing it and that that's really what it's all about real collecting is, in general is all about having fun anyway okay so now we talked about the like you said the the fun, the fun, the fun premium this is the stuff um, and now we um, I want to ask you about the premium from a sovereign mint yeah the sovereign mints basically um, have a premium for two reasons one it's actually a coin so when we're talking about some of the fun stuff that you can buy in silver and you've seen I'm sure the bullets and you've seen the little guns made out of silver and you know they have all types of fun stuff to to buy in pure silver these are actually coins so when you talk about these they can say you get one that's dated 2018 or 2019 the issue with those is they can't make that again they can't produce outside of the year it's supposed to be minted so once the total number of these are made and the low mintage is given out as a number for that year's production they can't make any more now you trust that maybe something like this um, you know they might limit it to a certain number but they could come up with another design they could keep coming up with different designs they could keep coming up with you know if it sells well for them um, they're they're basically not limited in terms of how many of these they put out they could make they could do you know we talk about cells out of um, comics and you know cartoons they could make one of these out of every cell out of this entire oh, series mm -hmm. so the the thing with these is that there's really no limitation if, it, if that does really well for a company they're probably going to do a second variation a third variation of, you know something else when you talk about sovereign mints once the year's over and they've completed the number of coins for that particular year that's it you right, know you're never going to find any more made for that year right so you won't see this right here because yes. this is the um this is the uh, Lion of England. That's it. This Lion of England in the yeah. two ounce is the mintage is what it is. Yeah. So after, uh, I if think that, this was 2016. Yeah, if that turns into a thousand dollar coin, that, that there's no way to make any more of those. You can't. You 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 can make uh, the same makes, design, but you cannot have sense. that same date on there. Gotcha. Once yeah. you get into coins and sovereign mints, uh, legally, once the year is done, they can't produce any more of those coins with that particular date on it so that makes a whole lot of sense and so yeah so we talked about some of the advantages some of the pluses in uh, premium silver and that all of that makes sense I have some premium silver um, but what are some of the disadvantages I think the two, the two major disadvantages you gonna have to really come to terms with the grips with if you if you do you know buy these types of items is one is your dollar isn't going to go as far obviously you're not going to be able to buy you know two ounces of silver here um could very easily buy four or five ounces of generic silver you know every time you buy one of these you're kind of leaving a little silver on the table that you're not getting mm -hmm. uh, for the same amount of money so your dollar isn't going to buy as much in terms of total silver and one of the things also to keep in mind is when you go to resell this you really have to spend a little more time finding the right buyer for these types of things these are not something you know this set you could walk into 10 different coin stores you're gonna get 10 different prices so as important as it might be to you as a buyer in terms of buying things and enjoying things that you buy keep in mind that when you go to resell them it might take a little more leg 
work to find the right buyer at the right price you're looking for because people are going to have to pay more to get this they have to know what this is and if a dealer buys it um, they're going to have to have a buyer for it also because on generic silver it's directly related to the silver market so if the silver market really takes a run say it takes a $15 run over the next six months your generic silver is is going to follow that now your premium silver if you've paid two hundred dollars for an ounce of silver um, you may not budge that much it just depends who the next buyer is so um, that's my my thinking in terms of getting um, understanding of the, the generic market in terms of having it potentially have a better return on your investment okay I got you so <clears throat> this is what I'm, I'm, I'm understanding about premium silver so far from what you um, what you've told me is one it really is in the eye of the beholder yes I mean you're gonna pay a premium because you like that particular item that you're buying and they're asking this yes. this this above the normal premium premium for second is it's it's gonna hold its value as long as there is a market for it like mm -hmm. these like these peanuts here and yep. the Batman that you said that mm -hmm. you showed us here um, they're wildly popular now Mm -hmm. They're wildly popular. I mean, you could sell these anywhere and you can get the premium for them. Uh, maybe not exactly what you pay for them, but you're going to get a, yep. a premium for those. Uh, the same with the Queen's Beast, mm -hmm. right? And the, and the, and the, I guess the most important thing about that is is finding a buyer that shares your enthusiasm about that piece. So you can't necessarily um, count on your enthusiasm that you feel about or the nostalgia or whatever you feel for that particular piece. You can't expect that to translate into the exact value someone else will place on that. Right. And so that's where you have to really be careful when you go to that. Like you, like you just said, that you can't expect to get exactly what you put into it, because what you're putting into it is based on your emotions, what you right. feel right. about that. Yeah. Like, oh, that's spoken like a true collector, because yeah. there's so many people that come through here that ha are collectors, and I can't price something out of their hand. Right. If they like it. Um, regardless of what it is, whether it's a coin or silver piece or, you know, any other the collectibles in here. When you get into that collector mentality, a collector spirit, nobody's going to be able to get take that from you. They'll, they'll offer you whatever number they can come up with, and you're still not going to let it go because right. you like it. And that's where, kind of where you jump into some of this, some of the things we've talked about today. But when you really go off there and get into the collector market, um, you buy it for a, a fact of, it, it just creates some sense of enjoyment for you, right. and it's hard for you to let that go. You don't sleep at night not thinking you're going to get your money back on right. it because you're not concerned about getting your money back on it, you know, in terms of reselling it because it's not for sale. But chances are it's going to hold its value, right. and I mean, I, especially on collector, you know, collector pieces. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's a good way to leave that because that's, that's really it in a nutshell when it comes to premium collector items like we saw today. Yeah. It comes down to price is not an option you're not worried about getting your money back you're not worried about being an investment you like it it's going in your yeah. stack and it's always going to have value anyway sure. so yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway i appreciate your time phil sure. appreciate that thank you very much all right thank you mm -hmm. all right well there you have it my take on the situation having listened to phil discuss the pros and cons of stacking high premium or buying high premium silver products is it is a personal taste you're buying this basically on emotion on how you feel about the product and not on a financial outlook this is basically for you personally and that's how i look at it and i'm sure i'm not alone in that this is more into the collector side of silver and not so much the stacking side at least that's my point of view you know we're just going to keep this silver train rolling i got a very special surprise for you guys coming up this month and as soon as that is available, I am absolutely going to share that with you guys. And I think you will like it as much as I am excited about it. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep stacking. Peace.